So now we'll be taking the derivative of the function arc cosine of x or cosine inverse of x using a method called implicit differentiation. Now differentiating all of the inverse trigonometric functions pretty much follow the same step-by-step -step process. However, I will lead you through it step-by-step. -step. So first thing that we're going to do is we are going to set the function arc cosine of x to y. y is equal to arc cosine of x. y is equal to arc cos of x. Now what we want to do is we want to isolate x, so we want to cancel out this arc cosine of x right over here. So we will take the cosine of both sides. So cosine of y is equal to the cosine of arc cosine of x. Now we have isolated x because the cosine and the arc cosine essentially kill each other off. They cancel each other out. So all we're left with is cosine of y is equal to x. Is equal to x. Now what we want to do is we want to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So we take d by dx of cosine of y and d by dx of x. So we'll be taking the derivative of cosine of y as a function of x using the chain rule. So we will define our inner and outer functions, f of x, g of x, f prime of x, and g prime of x. So our outer function is cosine of x. Our inner function is y. Our f prime of x is the derivative of f, which is negative sine of x, uh, sine of x. And our derivative of y is dy by dx. Using the chain rule, f prime composed of g, so we plug in y in here. f prime composed of g multiplied by g prime we are left with negative sine of y times dy by dx. And then we want to differentiate the other side, which is just going to be the derivative of x with respect to x, and that's just 1. So let's go and clean this up a little bit. d by dx of cosine of y is this, which we, which we figured out earlier, negative sine of y times dy by dx is equal to the derivative of this side, which is just 1. So let's go ahead and erase that. Now what we want to do is we want to isolate dy by dx. So if we wanted to isolate dy by dx, all we need to do is divide both sides by negative sine of y negative sine of y. All we're left with on one side is dy by dx is equal to negative 1 over sine of y. Now we're going to construct the same triangle that we had used in the previous video using the assumption that x is equal to the cosine or rather x is equal to the sine of y in this case. So y is equal to arc cosine of x, therefore the cosine of y is equal to x. So using this assumption over here, we can set up our triangle where we have our angle y, and the cosine of y, which is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, will be x, and then over the hypotenuse, which is equal to 1. So then we need to solve for this missing side over here using the Pythagorean theorem, and that is going to be 1 minus x squared. So essentially what we're going to be left with is negative 1 over sine of y. Sine of y in this case will be the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1. So that's 1 minus square root of 1 minus x squared. So now if we wanted to put things all back in terms of x, essentially what we do is we would substitute in sine of y for this expression here. So dy by dx is equal to negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. 